Hello, friends. So this book in particular is gonna be a special book because I use these books in my classroom for, for grammar. So it's actually the story of the week. So you are more than welcome to, say to listen to this story. They are still great stories to listen to. They're considered classics or stories that have won awards. Um, on that note, there are still gonna be reading comprehensions down below in the description box. Go ahead and use those with your family so you can continue and enjoy the enjoy the joy that books bring. So today I'm gonna to be reading The Great Aunt Arizona by Gloria Houston, illustrated by Suzanne Condi Lamb. My Great Aunt Arizona. My Great Aunt Arizona was born in a log cabin her papa built in the meadow on Henson Creek in the Blue Ridge Mountains. When she was born, the mailman rode across the bridge on his big bay horse with a letter. The letter was from her brother, Gallen, who was in the cavalry. Far away in the west, the letter said, if the baby is a girl, please name her Arizona and she will be beautiful like this land. Arizona was a very tall little girl. She wore her long brown hair and braids. She wore long full dresses and a pretty white apron. She wore high button shoes and many petticoats too. Arizona liked to grow flowers. She liked to read and sing. and square dance to the music of the fiddler on Saturday night. Arizona had a little brother, Jim. They played together on the farm. In summer, they went barefoot and caught tadpoles in the creek. In the fall, they climbed the mountains, searching for gallic and ginseng roots. In the winter, they made snow cream with sugar, snow, and sweet cream from mama's cows. When spring came, they helped Papa tap the maple trees and catch the sap in buckets. Then they made maple syrup and maple sugar to eat like candy. Arizona and her brother Jim walked up the road that wound up the creek to the one-room school. All the students in all the grades were there together in one room. All the students read their lessons aloud at the same time. They made a great deal of noise, so the room was called a blab school. The students carried their lunches in large buckets made of tin. They brought ham and biscuits. Sometimes they had fried apple pie. They drank cool water from the spring at the bottom of the hill. At recess, they played games like Tag and William Matramoti. When Arizona had re read all the books at the one room school, she crossed the mountains to the, other, to, the, to the school in another village, a village called Wing. It was so far away that she rode her papa's mule. Sometimes she rode the mule through the snow. When Arizona's mother died, Arizona had to leave school and stay home to care for papa and her brother Jim. She still loved to read and dream about the faraway places she would visit one day. So she read and she dreamed but she took care of Papa and Jim. Then one day, Papa brought home a new wife. Arizona could go away to school where she could learn to be a teacher. Aunt Susie invited Arizona to live at her house and help with the chores. Aunt Susie made her work very hard, but at night, Arizona could study and dream of all the fairway places, far away places she would visit one day. Finally, Arizona returned to her home on Henson Creek. She was a teacher at last. She taught in the one-room school where she and Jim had sat. She made new chalkboards out of the lumber from Papa's sawmill and covered them with black polish made for stoves. She, wore, she still wore long full dresses and his and a pretty white apron. She wore high button shoes and many petticoats too. 
She grew flowers in every window. She taught students about words and numbers and the faraway places they would visit someday. Have you been there? The students asked. Only in my mind, she answered. But someday you will go. Arizona married the carpenter who helped build the new Riverside School down where Henson Creek joins the river. So Miss Arizona became Miss Hughes. And for the rest of her days, she taught fourth grade students who called her Ms. Shoes. And when her, when her daughter was born, Ms. Shoes brought the baby to school to the sunny room where flowers grew in every window. Every year, Arizona had a Christmas tree growing in a pot. The girls and boys made paper decorations to brighten up the tree. Then they planted their tree at the edge of the schoolyard, year after year, until the entire playground was lined with living Christmas trees, like soldiers guarding the room, where Arizona taught with her long gray braids wound round her head with her long full dress and pretty white apron, with her high button shoes and many petticoats too. The boys and girls who were students in her class had, had boys and girls who were students in her class, and they had boys and girls who were students in her class. For 57 years, my great aunt Arizona hugged her students. She hugged them with their good, their work was good. She hugged them when it was not. She taught them words and numbers and about faraway places they would visit someday. Have you been there? The students asked, only in my mind. She answered, but someday you will go. My great aunt Arizona taught my dad, Jim's only son, and she taught my brother and me in the fourth grade. With her soft white braids wound round her head, she taught us about the faraway places we would visit someday. My great aunt Arizona died on her 93rd birthday but she goes with me in my mind, a very tall lady in a long full dress and a pretty white apron with her high button shoes and her many petticoats too. She's always there in a sunny room with many flowers in every window and a hug for me every day. Did she ever go to the faraway places she ta taught us about? No, but my great aunt Arizona travels with us, travels with me and with those of, with those of us who's lived whose lives she, lives she touched. Ooh, that was a tongue twister for me. She goes with us in our minds. All right, friends, I hope you like that book. I know it's a, a little bit longer of a story for our story of the week, but I hope you enjoyed it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.